God does not listen to the words in your mouth. God listens to the words spoken from your spirit. Mm. Likewise, the spirit also helps our infirmities. That word infirmities means our inabilities, our shortfalls, our failures, our weaknesses. For we know not what we should pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groans which cannot be altered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the minds of the Spirit, because he maketh intercessions for the saints according to the will of God. Let me find a way to explain to us what happens in prayer. In the first place, we say, God wants all those people who worship him to worship him in spirit and in truth. And we say the truth means you worship him in line with his word, which is the truth. So not just however you want it, not just your own way. You know, God is very wise. And I explained to us, the minister who just came, that loving a woman not her own way doesn't mean love. Mm. Because you have to give her love the way she understands it for it to be love. Mm. Hello? Hi. You have to worship God the way God wants it for it to be a worship. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So the truth is God's word. Mm. So that worship must agree with God's word. We said all of that. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Then when we say spirit, we say it has to come from your spirit because he does not listen to the voice of your physical body or your mind. He listens to the voice of your spirit. Number two thing to note about worshiping him in spirit or praying in spirit. There is no human language that is pure enough to communicate with God. The oldest language is called Latin. Am I right? Yes. yes. But it's been phased out. Mm. Let me show us a mystery that will help you to understand how to pray. When you hear the word in English, love, in Greek, that word love, there are close to six different other words. There is agape, there is filio, there is troge, there is eros, there is even other and so on and so forth. But English calls it love. Do you know why? Because English is deficient. As a matter of fact, a lot of English words are French. English is incomplete. French is incomplete. Greek is incomplete. Even Latin is incomplete. Have you ever come to a point where you didn't know how to express how you felt? How many of you can truly express love in words? They ask you, you love her. Yes, how did you know? He said, I, I can't really say, but inside me, inside me, I know I love her. I just know I love her. How many of you here have ever felt something in your spirit, but you couldn't say what it was? Do you know what is happening? Your spirit knows it, but your words can't communicate it. I say that you always find a woman say, he doesn't love me. Then the man is saying, I love her so much. And then the man will say, I buy her cars, I give her money, I give her house. The woman will say, she doesn't have time for me. Because for her, love is time. For you, love is money. You are giving her what she doesn't want. That is the greatest problem of divorce. There are five ways to express love. And we said, love is not what is given. Love is what is received. Love is defined at the point of reception. Because if what you gave me is not what I want, you didn't give me love. You gave me what you wanted, but for me, I didn't receive love. Hello? Hi. We now went to talk about God. We say, God said, don't worship me just any how you want. The way I want to be worshipped is in spirit and in truth. Yeah. And we say, truth is God's word. Amen. Amen. So anything you want to do, you want to worship God, Go to God's word and find what God's word says. Do it. That is worshiping God in truth. You give an example. If you want to pray, Jesus says, Don't pray to me. I won't pray for you. Pray to the Father. He wants to hear your voice. Because when you pray in my name, it is me who is praying. Yes. 
So when you say, Mary, pray for me, Jesus, pray for me, Angel, pray for me, God is not hearing me because it's not the truth. Mm -hmm. They were not talking about worshiping Him in spirit. Mm -hmm. And so worshiping in spirit has to be that thing that is in your heart, not what is in your mouth. Mm -hmm. So you can't come here and we say, let us pray for Sister Anne. And God will give her a husband. In your heart, you're saying, God, don't give her a husband. Oh, God, give Sister Anne a husband. God, don't give her a husband. Oh, God. <laughs> what God is hearing is, don't give her a husband. Mm -hmm. And I say, how do you know? I said, the Bible says in Matthew 5 27, you were told, if you heard, you said to your father's of old, don't commit adultery. But I said to you, a man who looks at a woman with lust in his heart is guilty of the same. What does it mean? When you look at a woman, whatever is in your heart is what God sees. That means anytime you want to pray, pray that thing that is inside your heart. So that's the first prayer of truth. Amen. Amen. Pray what's in your heart. There is no human language that is pure enough to communicate what is in your spirit. Hallelujah. And we read Romans 8, 26. He said the spirit himself helps our inability to communicate. There is no human language. Not even Latin. Not even Greek. Do you know that words Words in themselves carry value. Yes. 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 For example, if I tell you, I love you, that word, I love you, evokes something in you. Yes. But it's not going to invoke what I mean. It will invoke what love means to you. Yes. So if you don't understand the meaning of love, I didn't communicate. Yes. Okay. I'm from Ginanya. What did I say to you? <laughs> what does it mean? She doesn't know. I spoke my dialect. Because she doesn't understand what I said, it made no sense to her. But I actually told her the best of things a man can tell a woman. The best of things. If she understands it, she will hug me. <laughs> I said I love her so much. It made no sense to her because she doesn't understand what I'm saying. Let me try another one. Yeah, where they go? Yeah, where they go? What did I say? Come and take money. <coughs> if he had heard it, the guy would have jumped at me now for that money. <laughs> but he missed it. Why did he miss it? Because he doesn't understand what I said. Yes. And when you speak to God, God is not hearing you. God doesn't understand what you're saying. It doesn't make sense to him. They're not communicating. When you're speaking, oh God, my Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, yeah, 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 yeah. God is not listening to those things you're saying. God is listening to your heart. Because those words don't get to Him. See the wickedness of language. Language has been so watered down that it doesn't convey its meanings again. If Peter were to speak to Jesus, Peter would say, I agape you. Jesus said, love us more than these things. Jesus said, Lord, you know I love you. Am I correct? He would say to Jesus, I agape you. Three of us. Agape means God's kind of love. If Peter goes to his wife, Peter will not say, I agape you. He will say, I told you. Because love is the love of husband and wife. If Peter has, God forbid, a girlfriend somewhere, he will not tell her, I told you. He will tell her, I eros you. Because eros is the sensual one. And then when Peter goes to his brother, Andrew, he will say, I feel you. Because filio is family love. But in English, what would they write? I love you. Can you see how it lost its meaning? Yes. You know, when I started studying God's word at the age of 19, God took me back to reach that. The, the place the Bible was written. In the spiritual, not, not physically. He took me to... You know, I was saying that yesterday, I said, what God does to me, he takes me out, he shows me what he had in his mind when he said things. So when I open my eyes to read, I'll be like, what? This guy's wrote nonsense, so. Mind you, interpretation is not the same thing as translation. Translation is an attempt to put a word in another language. Interpretation is an attempt to get the meaning of the word. God does not translate your words because he hears all languages. 
God interprets the words of your heart. I want you to learn how to pray. Some of you pray without answers and you start blaming God. If you're talking trash, no God. Just opening your mouth and talking, talking, no, no, no. He doesn't hear it. So it's not a question of he didn't answer. He didn't even hear it. If you want me to go with you somewhere and to safeguard you, what will you say? Please do what? You say, please escort me. Escort is an English word. It's not an English word. If you want me to drive you and be your driver, what will you say I should do? I should shove drive you. Shove is that an English word? No, it's not an English word. It's a word. Can you see the weakness of language? Can you see the weakness of language? Yes, sir. No language is complete in itself. And so Peter goes to Jesus. I agape you. Goes to the wife. I told you. Side chick. I arose you. Goes to the brother. I feel you. The Englishman will say, Peter told them he loves them. And the person who is hearing he loves them will think he told them the same thing. They're not the same thing. They're not the same thing. So when you think, I prayed, I prayed, I talked to God, I told God, what is God hearing? That's the question you should be asking yourself. Which one is he really hearing? It is not those lip movements that he's hearing. It's not the lexicological conjunctions that he hears. It's not the combination of words and letters of the alphabet that he hears. It is the heart. So apart from the languages not being complete, also realize that even if the languages were complete, the languages cannot express your deep groanings. Do you know what that thing is? That is called the communication of the spirit, which your mind cannot explain. Yeah. Unless your mind had been trained by prophecy, you won't know what your spirit is saying. Yeah. It is those communications of the spirit that God listens to. And 99.99% of the times, your tongue cannot express your heart. If you understand what I'm teaching now, you can prophesy. If you understand what I'm teaching now, what I'm going to do today, you can prophesy. Amen. 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 Your spirit tells you things. Your spirit tells you things. But your mind is too noisy to hear. And your mind cannot understand it. And your mind cannot explain it. So how do you communicate what your mind doesn't understand with your mouth? Your mind speaks the language it understands. Hello? Hi. English, Tetswana, French, whatever you call it. Your mind speaks the language it understands. But your mind can understand your spirit. So how can you communicate to God what is in your spirit with your mind? 